You'll never hear anybody tell you that there's anything bad or wrong about you eating your greens and your vegetables because it's where you get most of your vitamins and minerals. It's, it's really good for your body. You won't feel so weighed down when you eat instead of, you know, that lethargic feeling we get after we eat because we overeat. Um, and I, I've been reading and listening to Dr. What's her name? Elizabeth. And um, she's also here on YouTube. I don't know what her faith beliefs are, but I know that she taught, uh, sometimes it, it almost sounds Buddhist or something. I don't know. I can't tell. But um, that that's important to me because I'm a Christian. So even if somebody is telling me good things about my body and how to take better care of it, if, if they're, uh, and I'm not saying she is this, I'm saying anybody, if, if, if someone tells me about how to take care of myself and they do it by a religion that is different from mine, then... I have to stop and say, but I don't go along with all of that. So what I may do instead is say, okay, Lord, you're my faith system. You are my religion, per se. You need to show me how you want me to eat. Um, this is your body. My body is the temple of God, and I should be taking care of it. And if I'm not, then I need to make some changes, and I do. So I would encourage you all to reevaluate your lives in that manner as well and ask God for the help that you need to take better care of your body as he sees fit. I know the Daniel diet is a really uh, popular one for Christians and I would, I'm looking into it myself so I don't, I don't, I can't speak on it yet and, um, and I'm not a health nutritionist, anything like that, so I can't, really can't speak to all this period but, um, because otherwise, I mean, I would have to reevaluate and I probably should be Everything that I use from makeup to hair to cleansers, um, like for instance, y'all know I'm a big Chanel person. I have no idea the healthiness of Chanel. I know that I like the brand. Um, I know that I like um, the skincare a lot. Um, today I'm using Le Beige's. This is the Healthy Glow Natural eyeshadow palette um, from Le Beige's. It's the one that's got the, the white with, uh, it's kind of like a creamy beige color with with the cc's instead of black and white and again this is the colors they're kind of your old faithfuls i mean it's a all matte except for the shimmer right there and it's a highlighter two neutrals and a dark and that is exactly what i always need so i kind of feel like i can't go wrong with this palette and yet i never use it and i'm not sure why so i thought we'll just start using it I think it's because it was expensive. It's nice. Um, also because I'm always evaluating other palettes. I don't know. So I'm going to use it today. And I'm just using the highlighter color. Wow. I kind of <laughs> really uh, got a little too much on the brush there. And I'm going under the brow. And I don't just do out here. That's what a lot of people do. I go all the way under the brow. And I do it a little slower. I, just, I see some people do it like this, and I'm like, I just, I don't know. I feel like I'm more precise when I go a little slower. And that I can really push it and pack it into the pores backward and forward, and it gets the color in there really good. I don't know that I really needed to do two passes of this. I just did. Okay, and now I'm going to take that same matte color, and I'm going to go over the inner... Um, corner of the eye and then I'm just going to make kind of a quick pass over everything just to kind of um, lay the foundation if you will for the other colors that are coming and all this is doing is putting powder in the pores so it'll be like smoothing you know when you drive down the street and you see where they're working on the street and they're filling in the potholes first that's because they're going and making everything nice and smooth that's what we're doing okay now I'm going to take uh, these colors. I'm going to go with this color out here. It's a, a, like a light brown. And I'm using an E50 um, large fluffy brush from Sigma Beauty. Starting from the outside because when you put down your first uh, that's what, the most that comes off the brush. So I always start outside because I like it to be a little darker on the outside. And I'm just going to this section between the highlight and the crease. So from the highlight area, the brow bone area, all the way down to the lid. That's what the crease area is, obviously. <laughs> and all you're doing is you're just giving a background for a darker color to blend better. 
Um, some would call this a smoky eye because smoky eye has nothing to do with the color of smoke. It has to do with going dark to lighter to lighter to lighter because that's what smoke does as it goes up it lightens. But it's usually in the same color tone so you can do a green smoky eye, a navy smoky eye, a, a rust colored smoky eye, a purple smoky eye, or a smoke colored like a charcoal smoky eye or a brown smoky eye which is not the color of smoke. <laughs> smoke is gray. <laughs> it's black and then it's lighter black and then it's gray and then it's white or clear and that's what smoke is that's where the term comes from so now I'm going to use um, this is the E45 um, small tapered blending brush and I'm going to this darker color and because it's tapered meaning um, you know what tapered means but because it's not all everything hitting at one point see how there's the little point all those little tapered pieces aren't going to hit unless I roll them and so when I put this on here, I don't just do like a dab in like you would a flat brush like this to where just one section hits. I'm going to roll this brush in this color right on the tapered end like that. Back and forth twice. Tap it off because it's a very dark color. And of course, again, you're putting down on the outside end because that's where your darkest area is going to be. And then I come up just a hair. The crease. And then just as I blend back and forth, I'm coming up just a little to really fill the crease. Now I'm going to stay back here a little and roll this brush because there's uh, powder all over it. If I really want to darken it up, I can roll right there without picking up the tip. And then it kind of deposits more color there. And then I can kind of blend that out a little bit to make this outer V look. And what that does is it just gives uh, more definition in the eye area. More depth, I should say, not definition. And that's the look that I like. Now, yesterday I did a color, it was more of an olive green, and I did it all over the lid, and that's a very flattering look as well. So we don't have to do it the same way every day. Roll without lifting the lid, and see how that made it darker right there? And so now I'm gonna roll the brush and get the back side of it, and I'm gonna brush through that and blend that out, that dark area out. Just to give me that outer V look again some reason. I think, you know, I always say it's because of this scar right there, but I think the reason I don't get as much color over here has to do with the angle of crossing your arm over your chest, and I'm kind of chesty, and it's it's kind of hard to get a good blender on that. And I don't think I ever get my eyes exactly right, to be honest. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to use a blending brush, because obviously there's terrible lines, and we need to blend that out a little bit. This is the Tapered Blending A40. And so I'm just going to blend this line up right front away and this right here away and especially right back there. Um, I almost mushed that in. Instead, you see I have a little powder right there. And I'm just going to flick that off with a dual fiber. See how it just flicked it off. If I would have rubbed that, it would have rubbed it in. All right, now I'm going to just kind of blend out this edge over here just a little. To see the difference between a blended eye and non-blended, see how you see these lines right there and there? And there that's all blended out but don't over blend it or you'll blend it all into each other and these colors instead of being defined will be just one big blob of, unless you like that maybe you want a what, big blob that's okay you do what you want there's acceptable ways to do makeup in certain professional environments but other than that you do your makeup how you want and here's the thing that you risk whenever you do your makeup Someone's interpretation of how you... My dogs are going crazy today. Someone's interpretation of how you do your makeup is none of your concern. You shouldn't worry so much about what they think. However, in a work environment, that's a different story. You have to go by what's acceptable at your place of work. Okay, so... Because you're being paid to do something. You're not being paid to be yourself. You're being paid to do a job. That's what's called a job. Okay, so I'm also going to use my finger... And I'm going into the shimmery color. And I'm going to start right here in the inner corner. Just to see if that wakes it up a bit. It does. And I'm going to go over the center inward. I'm not going to overdo it. Just the center of the eye inward. There. It's just a little bit of shimmer. I didn't want to go overboard. Do you see the difference? Okay. Just a little bit of shimmer inner corner, just to wake up the inner area of the eye. 
and then from the middle of the eye right there see a little bit will get back there anyway inward blend it inward from the middle inward you can kind of if you want to go a little above the line just to kind of blend it up a little bit there it's not a lot of hoo-ha this is a very subtle palette again these colors are very traditional it's a highlighter two choices of neutrals a dark and a shimmer it's so traditional it's always funny okay now I am going to use yes I always use my spit that freaks out probably most people but anyway it's my palettes and I don't share them if somebody ever wants my makeup, mm -hmm. I find out which thing they like and I go buy them their own. I never just give them something I've used. Uh, just because you really shouldn't share makeup because of your skin cells and everything are specifically oh. yours. And especially if you have oh. habits that you don't even think about, like what I just did. You, you don't want to share makeup with someone that you've done that. Bree wants me to kick the ball and it's just part of my life. Okay. So, again, I'm using, this is a short shader. Some people would call this a smudge brush. It's just very, very short, tightly packed, dome-shaped. It's, but when you turn it this way, see, when you turn it this way, it's wide. But when you turn it this way, it's almost like the most packed, little, perfect, elongated liner brush <laughs> to me. And that's why I use it to line right under my lashes. And, um... I'm not going far below today. I'm staying right at the lash. And then I'm also using whatever's left over to kind of stamp in the lash line above. Just to kind of get a, a little bit darker color right at the lash line. Now, I could go through the brow with anything that's left over. Just gotta go through the brow. Mm -hmm. 